Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Today we're going to be looking at kind of a different style of task. We've looked at databases before. The last time we met, we looked at a refactoring task that was kind of interesting and sort of along the same lines as what we're looking at today. But in this case, it's actually a recovery task, as you can see up here. So what does that mean? Well, basically, we've got some code already written to solve this task. Right now, it's just an algorithmic challenge. And we need to sort of fill in the blanks, so to speak. So we have these ellipses here. And these tasks can be designed in various different ways, right? Like we could have just one sort of blank spot. We could have multiple of them like we do in this task. And there could be a lot more code written here, but I just wanted to go with uh, kind of a simple example to sort of show the core concept here. So basically in this specific task, we're looking to switch the order of words in a sentence or, or in a string anyway. So words are separated by spaces and we just sort of want to have like swapping the even and odd words essentially is what we want to do. Okay. So there are, there are a few different ways we could do this. You know, we could go through this and say like, all right, first let's split this, let's split the string on space characters so that we get an array of all the words. And then we can split that into like the even words and the odd words just by filtering the indices. And then we could go through that and, uh, and create a new array from there going through them uh, in the opposite order and then join that array with spaces or something like that, right? There are a variety of ways that we could go about doing this problem. But what's interesting about a recovery task is we can sort of limit the ways that someone might attempt this problem or might solve this problem, I should say. So specifically in this case, we're looking at a situation where we want to solve this task using regular expressions and not just using them, but like specifically using the s dot replace or the you know, string dot replace command, uh, specifically having a regular expression with the global flag initiated here. And, and we're using it as sort of um, like using the, the slash syntax as opposed to like a new regular expression, which would allow us to, to do other stuff in there. So there's some limitations in terms of how we're solving the problem. A good way to think about, or at least one way that you can use recovery tasks is let's say you're looking to test a candidate to see not only if they can solve the problem, but if they can solve it in a particular way. Maybe it's a standard that your company tends to use or something like that. And you really want someone who's, uh, who, who really knows how to do it within that particular style. So in this case, since we want to keep this really uh, regular expression centric, we're going to attempt this one. We'll start by doing a, a capture group for a word and then another space, or sorry, a space and then another capture group for the second word. And then over here, basically this is a function that's gonna take this, it's gonna take the entire thing that it grabs as, uh, as the first argument. And then it's gonna have like the first capture group and the second capture group over here. Those are really the two that I'm interested in. Those are the two that we wanna use here because we wanna return a word that basically has the second word first and then it has a space and then it has the first word after that. So if we run the tests over here, we'll see what happens. There we go. That didn't take very long. So we've looked at other tasks before, like where we're dealing with databases, where we have uh, some sort of UI thing or like a, a front end widget or something like that, where there's a Selenium browser in the background that's going through and interacting with elements. So that those kinds of tasks tend to take a relatively longer time, but you'll notice with this one, I mean, we ran the test and it really did not take very long for this to come back, for it to have all of these assessed because it's just running this little script over here. So much less intensive than some of the other stuff we've looked at before. Okay, so that's one of the ways we could use a recovery task. Another way is we could, let's say have uh, maybe like 30 lines of code already written, right? And then just there's one line that's missing so that we can use that to assess for, for code review skills, right? To see if our candidate can sort of get into the mind of another developer who had pre-written some of the code there. Maybe we could use that to test for certain paradigms, uh, see how well our candidate understands object-oriented programming or something like that, right? Uh, okay, so any other advantages to this style of task? Well, 
Another thing, I mean, if you were here for last week, you remember the refactoring task we looked at? One of the big advantages we mentioned then is the targeted assessment. The fact that if we have some boilerplate code already written, we can really zoom in on the thing we're trying to test for. So if in this case, we're trying to test uh, how well the candidate can work with regular expressions, and we want to take out all the things that we can that aren't exactly that sort of uh, nucleus of, of the skill that we're looking for specifically. And, and that basically allows the candidate to, to give the same impression. I mean, we can get the same signal in terms of what their skills are in a shorter amount of time. So there are benefits for everyone involved. All right. So I think we're pretty much done with this one over here. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, but otherwise, be sure to tune in next week where we'll take another look at a different type of task. Uh, bye for now. <laughs>